Welcome to another Keyshot Quick Tip. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use render layers in order to streamline your workflow when going to an image editor after rendering your scene in Keyshot. Render layers are available in Keyshot 4.1 as part of the Pro package. In this scene here, I've already assigned materials to my model as well as my ground plane. All of these materials were made using pre-existing materials and textures in the 4.1 material library. The lighting environment was set up using the HDR editor in Keyshot Pro. Render layers will output a separate image layer with an alpha channel for each part assigned to it, which makes assembling and editing each individual layer extremely easy in an image editor. If we take a closer look under the Properties tab of my scene tree, you can see that different parts of the model have been assigned to different render layers. In order to create a new render layer, select the part you want and select New Render Layer from the drop-down menu. Then assign it a name. I can also assign a render layer from the pre-existing render layers that I've already made. In this scene, I've assigned each different material that I want as an individual layer to be added to a layer, including the ground plane, for further control in my post-processing. Additionally, we've added the ability to create a clown pass, where each individual material will automatically be assigned a different diffuse color for easier masking in Photoshop or GIMP. In order to enable this functionality in the final render, both types of passes have to be checked off under the Passes tab of your Render Settings window. When you hit the Render button, the rendering will proceed as normal, but you will have extra files in your Renderings folder. There will be a rendering that will match your normal render output, and each different render layer will also be assigned to a separate file with an alpha channel. Additionally, since we also selected Clown Pass as an option, an image with diffuse materials as a flat image will be in the render folder as well. Now that our rendering is done, I'll take a look at the output files in my renderings folder. You can see here that I have these different files, each with a different file name for each render layer. I'll select all of these and I'm going to drag them into Photoshop and load them. You can use one of the existing Photoshop scripts to actually combine these all into one single image. Under the File menu, under Scripts, use the Load Files into Stack function. Add the open files then hit OK to let Photoshop do the work and assemble these into one final image. Once this is all assembled, under my Layers window, you'll see each individual layer along with the Clown Pass and the composite rendering. Here we have our final image. Now we have each individual layer with the material assigned to it so that you can adjust each layer individually in Photoshop. If you notice any pixel edges on the layers, use the defringe function under the layer and matting to remove some pixels along the outside edge. From here, each individual layer can be individually adjusted to get your desired look in Photoshop.